802. 0082. And uh, John was playing with pinball. That would be one of my favorite things know, to collect I if I, I was a Simpson collector, John. Here. How did you do with the uh, pinball game? I lost. Oh, I, lost. No. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, it's Friday. It doesn't matter. Claire, I don't know if you knew this, but the Simpsons are not only national. The Simpsons are happening. The Simpsons are international. We've got stuff here from Mexico. We've got stuff here from England. I don't think personal effects is even international. All this merchandising memorabilia belongs to our super collector, Craig Vinton. Craig, thank you, sir, for joining us again. Thank you, John. Good to have you here. Let's talk about how the Simpsons got started. It's an interesting story. How did that happen? Well, they got started on the Tracy Ellman Show in uh, 1990. They were a little trailer to get people in and out of the uh, commercial, and they were probably only 10 to 15 seconds long in each segment, two to three per show. I guess the guy that created The Simpsons was also working on the Tracy Ullman show. That's how they found him, right? right? That's right, James Brooks. Okay, now we just mentioned on the show that there was an animation cell that went for a lot, amount of, a lot of money, and you've got an animation cell from the show, right? I do, but it's not worth anything near what that is. Well, tell me about this one here. Uh, this is from the, uh, s the show where Bart Simpson took a, an FM uh, wireless microphone, dropped the uh, radio down a, uh, a well, and <laughs> started yelling out, help, I've fallen down the well, and the entire town, actually the whole nation came to the aid of the little boy in the well and had a kind of a We Are the World song and the whole deal. You know, it was a complete satire on that, that event. Now, th this cell, though, although it doesn't go for 24000 goes for a significant amount of money. Uh, $6,800, $6, yeah. 6800 All right, let's head over this way, because you have so much stuff. And, uh, Claire, as you go on, you'll see that the Simpson merchandising memorabilia just continues on and on. If you head over this way, you'll actually see uh, Simpson clothes. you got the socks, you got the ties, you got the Hanes. You have basically one piece of every uh, Simpson merchandising memorabilia that there is? I, d I, c I sort of do. Uh, there's uh, some I'm missing, obviously, but uh, I get a good representative collection here. Tell me about the skates here. Uh, the roller skates are one of the few used items I have. I just uh, found them at a swap meet, and I thought they were just incredible, so I picked them up. You didn't peel those off a kid, did you? Uh, not telling. <laughs> <laughs> Claire, as you can see, this stuff just goes on and on, and I'm seeing a, what we call, I guess, a cross-collectible here. you got the uh, Simpsons cookie jar. That's right. It's a false graph uh, cookie jar. It's fairly recent, uh, probably not terribly valuable, but it sure looks great. John? Well, that brings it. Yes, yeah, Claire. Actually, Craig, how long is this going to be on display at the Seattle Center? How long, Claire? Yeah. Uh, we'll be here till August 7th. So you have more stuff at home? I do have more stuff at home, but uh, not much. Pretty much all here. Well, we were talking about the price of this cookie jar, and you're saying, well, maybe, you know, not terribly valuable here and there, but is this stuff going to go up in value that we're looking at? I, I imagine some of it will. Some of it already has. The real uh, uh, high-density stuff like the Burger King dolls and things like that are, are starting to go up. Oh, the Burger King dolls. Let's go look at those because, of course, you've got some of those. He's got these uh, Burger King dolls, and uh, tell me about these here. Well, these are the original in-package Burger King dolls, and we have uh, one of each and two or three of each sometimes. And this is Krusty the Clown, which was deemed uh, unsuitable for Burger King release, so now it's uh, only available if you can find it as a, uh, a closeout item somewhere, something like that. Unsuitable because of his crusty personality? Well, yes, and the cartoons therein. <laughs> And we were talking again uh, about value on these. And what did they go for? And what do they go for now? Well, as I remember, they were buck forty-nine when you bought a drink or a, a burger or something like that. And now they're uh, twelve to fifteen dollars a piece. It seems to me that if you're going to start collecting, you know, Simpsons collectibles, that maybe you want to start with Krusty because you can still get him, but he's the one that they didn't release. Is that right? Exactly. But uh, he'll be easier to get, so in a sense, he won't be that valuable as well. Okay, well, I just learned something. You've also got the Soaky bottles over here, which is like another cross collectible. Yes, we have the Soakies, the shampoo, and the bubble bath, and Bart Simpson hair gel, and all that kind of stuff. You've got a ton of stuff. <laughs> Do you have a favorite character? I think, actually, Homer's my favorite now. Bart used to be the star of the show, but I think that, that Homer is now. I can't resist the temptation to almost get too deep on this, but they kind of ref reflect our society, don't they, the Simpsons? Exactly. They're very topical. They try and stay with... Uh, uh, newsworthy topics, uh, you, you get them maybe six months down the line, but uh, yeah. They're great. Now, they didn't start out as a comic book character, but you've got all the uh, comics here. That's right. The comics started coming out in 91. These are the very first comics here. These, this one you're holding is kind of rare because it's a foil applique, and there's also a glow-in-the-dark applique, which were limited editions. So rare that they actually made duplications of these, right? Because I see this one as foil, but this one isn't, but it's the same right. cover. Right. The non-foil version was the one that uh, was released to the masses, so to speak. 
Can yeah. this be gotten, or is this very rare? I would imagine you can get it. I, I'm not too into the, uh, the comic book part of it, so. All right, well, let, let's head over this way and tell me about this thing. <laughs> well, this is the Simpsons arcade game, the video game, and, of course, you were already on the pinball game. Uh, this four people can play, and each person takes the uh, character, whether it's uh, Marge or Homer or Bart or Lisa. Craig, this is certainly a collection that you can just enjoy, even, like, by yourself. Isn't that right? I love it. I play the games all the time. We have battles in my basement. Thank you for having us. Thank really you. appreciate it. Really, we've had a good time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, John, yeah, it's been, it's been our pleasure. Question for Craig. What, I do have a question. I yeah. want to know if among this collection is anything relating to that music video that Bart made. Yes, I have the music video, the album, mm -hmm. and uh, all the episodes. <laughs> Go ahead, ask another one. <laughs> There's actually uh, more, music, more music coming out, too, right? There's a rumor to be a new album out coming out called The Yellow Album. Mm -hmm. The Yellow Album. <laughs> And John, well, glad, you heard it here first. I'm glad to know if you need any hair gel, you know where to go. You're in the right place. You know, That's right. There's Simpsons hair gel. Thank you so much for sharing your collection with us. And how interesting that it's on display. Yeah, that's I mean, fascinating. The public yeah, can come great. and see it as well. That's very nice. So, um, coming up next, one of your favorite departments, probably yours as well, Judith. Absolutely. <laughs> um, state jewelry. We're going to take a look at that and find out what to look for and where to find it and just how affordable it is in a moment. Not